Okay, so we are in section 1.1 to 1.4. We are talking about normal stress, which is N over A, and this is example two that's in your example PDFs. So if I have a bar with a cross-sectional area of 400 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, uh, meter squared, so that's nice that I'm already in the correct unit. So my area is given at 400 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. It is subjected to a uniform axial distributed load. Uniform axial distributed load. So it looks just like a load that would be in shear, a uniform load. It's acting down the length. And I know, look at the units. The units help tell me which kind of load we're looking at and two concentrated loads. So that would be like a shear force, okay? So it's just like what we did with beams, except we're now looking at axial loads, okay? Determine the average normal stress in the bar as a function of X from zero to 0 0.5. Zero to 0 0.5, X, remember X always starts back here on the left side of the beam, always, always. So if I take my handy dandy post-it note, let me find my post-it note here. If I take my handy dandy post-it note and I want to write an equation from 0 to 0 0.5, okay? And, and why do I want from 0 to 0 0.5? Well, because at 0 0.5, I now have an axial load. That changes my free body diagram. So if I'm looking at it here, I have to figure out what my reaction is. I have to always, always, always include that reaction at A. Okay, if I had shear and moment, it would be the same thing if I wanted to find my shear moment equations, which we did in statics. So a lot of what we learn in statics and learn in here, you have to figure out how to apply it to a, 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 new, a, a new way of looking at things. I have to figure out how do I apply writing equations when I'm looking at axial loads. Because you know what? When we do torsion, same thing. Okay, same thing. We can have torque that's that's changing down the length of the beam. So the first thing I have to do is number one, I have to draw a free body diagram and I have to find that reaction at A. Okay, so here's my beam and I have three kilonewtons. I have six kilonewtons and I have this uh, uniformly distributed W equals eight kilonewtons per meter. And the whole thing here is 1.25 meters. So I'm gonna assume that AX goes to the right, even though I can clearly see it's gonna go back to the left, but just we're, keep it consistent, summing forces equals zero AX minus or plus six kilonewtons, plus three kilonewtons, plus, I've never seen an axial load like this, what do I do? Look at the units, eight kilonewton per meter. That is not the right units. How can I get into the right units? I can multiply it by meters. And look at that. My meters cancel out and I'm left with kilonewtons, kilonewtons, kilonewtons. This class, thermo, any class that you have, the easiest way to do problems, if you don't know what you're doing, is to look at the units. And look at that, they work out. So I'm gonna get that AX equals negative 19 kilonewtons. That means that it equals 19 kilonewtons going back to the left. So now, I have to come up here and I have to draw from 0 to x to 0 0.5 meters. So I'm going to draw my cross section. Here's my cross section. And I have that internal normal. Remember, we could also do shear and moment and torque. But right now, all we have are axial loads. I have on the outside, I have a uniform. Okay, I have a uniform eight kilonewtons per meter. So it's just, a, it's just a function of how many meters I have. And then I have this 19 kilonewtons acting to the left. That is my reaction. X always starts at the left-hand side and goes to my cut. So what do I need to do here? Okay, I just need to sum forces in the x direction equals zero negative 19 plus okay that's in kilonewtons let's just keep up with our units negative 19 kilonewtons plus well i have eight kilonewtons per meter so i have to get rid of the meters well my x is variable in meters so 8x plus n equals zero if i rewrite this i'm going to get that n equals 
19 minus 8x kilonewtons. And there's my equation for my normal force as I am going down the length of the beam. What if I wanted to find it from 0 0.5 to x, um, and that would go to 1.25 meters? Same thing. I'm going to draw my cross section. Here's my reaction. I'm cutting it. Internal normal. Again, I could also have shear, moment, torque. That would be a lot of equation writing. Um, I have this load outside of 8 kilonewtons per meter. And I now have to include, as I move this down, I now have to include this 6 kilonewtons right there. And I have 19 kilonewtons going back. And here's my x. And I know that this distance right here is 0.5. So how do I get an equation? Summing forces in the x direction equals 0. Negative 19 kilonewtons plus 6 kilonewtons plus 8 kilonewtons per meter. I've got to get times x, okay, times x. And um, is that all that I have? Absolutely. And it's times x because it actually goes all the way down the length. If it only went down part of the length, like we didn't have it here, then we would have to call this x minus 0 0.5 just like we would with shear. So if this wasn't if this if this uniform load was being applied starting there, then the length would be x minus 0 0.5. But it's starting all the way back. equals 0. Oh, plus normal force. I got so excited there. plus n equals 0. So my normal force, okay, my normal force if I were to write this all out um would end up being I don't have a working calculator, so I worked it out already. And uh, it looks like it would be, well, I didn't actually write it out, but um, it'll be 19 minus 6. So what is 19, um, 19 minus 6 would be 13. So I'd have 13 minus 8x. For my equation okay it says what is our stress well if this is my normal force then my stress is n over a so i'm going to have 19 minus 8x divided by 400 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared this is in kilonewtons and i can divide the 19 by 400 and i can divide the 8x by 400 and i will end up with a stress equation of 47.5 minus 20x megapascals. So I have a variable stress because I have a variable load as we're working down that length, we're adding on, okay, we're adding on that normal, that normal force, that axial load is variable. Um, you could also have, what if I had a cross section? Okay, what if I had something that had a cone shaped cross section? Okay, my area can also be variable. If I have variable area, I would also have to write an equation of my area as we're changing with a function of x. And so I could end up with variable over variable, okay? Variable over variable. So that would look something like this, okay? So that stress would be increasing because our area is decreasing. Anyways, that's how you would set it up. Um, if you wanted to come from the right side, if you didn't want to find that reaction, then you could draw this from the right. There's that internal normal force. And I would have external, I would have the uh, 3 kilonewtons and the 6 kilonewtons. And I would have this, I'm not going to draw top and bottom, but 8 kilonewtons per meter. X always starts way back here at the wall. So that's X. If that's X, okay, if that's X and the whole thing is 1.25 meters, then I know that this distance has to be 1.25 minus x. And so I can set up this same equation. Um, this time I'm going to have, uh, if I sum forces in the x direction equals 0, I'm going to have 3 plus 6 plus 8 times 1.25 minus x, okay? Minus n equals 0, so n equals 9 plus 
um, 8 times 1.25 minus x. And you're going to find you get the same answer that we had before. So anyways, kind of cool. It's a very, very cool, but you can do it both ways.